It's my pleasure to welcome Jenny Wells from the New Zealand Aid Program from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade in New Zealand. Welcome to our discussion about the conference. But just before we begin, what sessions have you enjoyed at this conference? Are there one or two sessions that have got you thinking and, and thought, yes, that's significant? There's been a lot of the sessions, but I guess the ones that I particularly enjoyed was uh, the discussion around women, peace and security, and also a lot around the, the policing and the different types of policing, uh, the effectiveness or not of, um, of different policing work around the world. And also because of my personal interest, the Afghanistan following the, uh, you know, the changes that are happening in Afghanistan and the different reflections that so many speakers brought to the conference. Okay. The theme of the conference is, is lessons learned and focusing particularly on times of transition. What were the, were the key issues you explored in your paper on the New Zealand government providing humanitarian assistance the Pacific way? What, what were the key questions you were exploring? Well, we, we, what we were trying to share was, um, I guess, a whole body of work that has uh, that New Zealand government has undertaken from learnings from the response to the Samoa earthquake and uh, the, the tsunami, sorry, in, in 2009. And where it, there was a definite sense within the government that we could have done better. Um, you know, New Zealand prides itself on being a... Uh, although a, a modest sized donor, a uh, principled, a strong and an effective donor. And a good neighbour. I think of New Zealand, you try to be a good neighbour, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think that's really important in the Pacific. We often say we're not in the Pacific, we're of the Pacific. Um, we're very much, you know, part of that Pacific culture and uh, the role that we can play, even though we may not be as big, the biggest donor, is that partnership approach with those governments and those states in the Pacific. And we've had a very deliberate priority focus on the Pacific. Uh, doesn't mean we don't engage elsewhere, but that's where our niche is. That's where we think we can have a bigger sphere of influence. So can you remind us what happened to Samoa and the scale of the problems? So in 2009, there was a large tsunami that, uh, you know, affected a large um, area of the uh, one of the one of the island of the main island, it required a, a large international response from New Zealand. We had uh, military involvement. We had civil agencies, government. We also had our NGO partners working uh, on the response there. And there's been a significant recovery and reconstruction effort as well. Um, and why were you uneasy? You you you, you imply that the. You felt you could have done better. What was it that concerned New Zealand as you reflected on your experience? Look, the response on the ground, I think, uh, was um, there's always chaos. These disaster responses, there's always chaos. But it's managed chaos and, you know, we, we get there as, we, as we, we go through stages of responding. And I think what the New Zealand delivered was well, it was good. It was well respected and, and um, well received. Um, the learnings we had were more how we worked collectively in country, in New Zealand, across governments, so that civil, military, police sort of connection uh, or interaction, which is why it was directly relevant to this conference. So what, what are the three key things you've tried to do better and what have you been doing? So the lessons that came out of that was the need for us to have much better cross-government cross planning and systems and procedures and decision-making mechanism, a actual um, physical um, site, if you like, for coming together to coordinate a response and also um, a lot of clarity around uh, when we would provide assistance and on what basis. Okay, three great topics. Let's come to the f first one about cooperation across silos within government. Honest to goodness, I swear to God, I've spent 25 years of my life asking people questions about this on panels and in individual sessions at forums and conferences. I'm not being cynical at all. What that tells me is it's what the British sometimes call a wicked problem. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very hard to do well. Why is that so? Because you're talking about within New Zealand. You're not even talking across international boundaries. And New Zealand isn't that big and there aren't that many people. So even New Zealand is struggling. So why is it so hard for different agencies to talk to each other? 
So I think um, following that, that sort of lessons learned process and the real desire that there was, or there, and there still is, to do the best we can, yeah. um, we've established what we call our emergency task force. Yeah. And that brings all the key stakeholders, government and non-government, including the Red Cross and our NGO partners together, as well as France and Australia, because we have the FRANS arrangement in the Pacific for responses. And there, we, we sit down now and there's, it's actually a formalised process of how we share information, plan, and then go ahead and deliver assistance. That, while we did it um, previously, and I think we all did it well, we, what we were lacking was that sort of coalescing point, if you like. Yeah and having the systems or the structures around that now. So last year we had a, um, a, a water crisis in the country of Tuvalu and also in Tokelau. Now New Zealand government led the response to both of those with the support from Australia and from the US and our civil, sort of, our um, NGO partners. And, and it went better. The learnings from that was that that forward leaning approach is what we call it, being prepared, having a, a, um, a, a task force already stood up, ready to go, and people knowing what their roles and responsibilities just facilitated uh, a, a much faster, smoother and coordinated response. Okay, so, so pre-existing relationships, communication systems and agreed guidelines plus co-location at a headquarters to monitor and control when the event actually happens? They're the two action points? That... Yeah, so... Because yeah. the question I asked you was about why it's so hard, mm -hmm. and you went to your actions, which is perfectly OK, but is that because New Zealand decided to lean forward and act better and you didn't reflect on causation? Because sometimes people would say you need to understand causes of problems to solve them. Maybe that's wrong, you just took action. So I guess the causes were because while we each had our own very good operating systems, what we didn't have was a, um, a structure that then provided the leadership, if you like, over those operating structures. So the New Zealand Defence Force had very good operating procedures for how they would respond to disasters. So does New Zealand Police and so does the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But actually that sort of dis joint decision making and planning where you come together with the initial information was um, not as smooth as it could have been. So that was the, I guess, the gap, if you like. And can I ask you, We've previously spoken to a wing commander from New Zealand uh, who's spoken at the conference who was talking about, you know, the, the shipping, the ship that went aground, the Ch Christchurch earthquakes and how uh, lessons they had learnt from managing that. Are they two separate systems because you have an outward international focus whereas the other would be a, an internal New Zealand focus or are they the same systems? I th they're a different, um, there's a different focus or a different objective. So the New Zealand Defence Force learnings, even though they were very similar around interagency coordination and leadership and management and support, was all onshore. It's their role onshore and we're looking at offshore. Mm. But it's exa it is, it's, a, it's ex the same learnings. Mm. It, it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, here at this uh, conference, uh, the focus is a lot on the cooperation between civil and military or defence agencies dealing with external nations in trouble, either through humanitarian uh, disasters of some kind or through conflict. Um, and yet the same challenges do exist in the domestic sphere. Is there much... Is one goal that we should perhaps talk more, those two sets of systems should talk more to each other? I guess, I mean, there are different principles at play when you're operating onshore in your own country compared to when you're actually going offshore into another, another nation. And there's different uh, parameters around that as well and le different legal frameworks. I was about to say is that the legal frameworks, um, there certainly are um, army personnel here who have worked not only in international uh, um, interventions, but have also been involved in interventions in our remote Aboriginal communities. And that some of the lessons relevant in the international arena of development and community development are considered relevant within a domestic setting in certain parts of Australia. Mm -hmm. 
Is that true in New Zealand as well? I would argue it would be the same across the same across the whole of Australia or the whole of New Zealand really, that um, you know, community engagement, ensuring that you're building on local capacity, not replacing uh, the consultation phase that you ac people actually know who you are and why you're there and the reasons of what you're doing. Yes. Um, just out of respect, if nothing else. Um, they're the same regardless of whether I think you're working within your own country or externally. It's about common humanity. Core values. Core values and core principles. And that was a lot of what we were working on when we were developing the guiding principles for the way that New Zealand government provides assistance offshore, was trying to reflect those core values. The the one thing that is different is that whole issue of sovereignty. So we were trying to make it really clear that to our partners in the Pacific and to our own staff that when a, you know New Zealand will respond to when we get a request, when there's a request for assistance, and then you know work with the state, uh, the affected state, to deliver that assistance. It's not about um, you know jumping the gun if you like, or you know jumping in to say we're going to save you. I think there's been a significant shift globally in that attitude, probably in the last 10 years. Yeah, a bit more humility. Look, just my final question, we began with your response to Samoa, wasn't it? How are you going? Because this is about transitions at different phases. What phase are you up to and how is that transition going? So in regards to Samoa, and it's no different to Tuvalu and the other you know, responses in the Pacific where they're natural. But the way um, we, the, the New Zealand government, I guess the, the key focus there is working with the state the affected state uh, to build their, that threshold of their own capability so that next time around they've got high levels of preparedness and risk reduction. That means the threshold that they actually need overseas help, international assistance, is higher. So we've transitioned through to our development program. The, these relationships are actually managed through our development program and the humanitarian program or you know, allocation or uh, what, however you want to call it, assistance, yeah. kicks in when it's needed. And then there's a transition back to development, our bilateral program, very much working with the government on, on the, what their objectives are, what their development needs are to take that development trajectory forward. Look, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.